not only will there be a football game going on at Arrowhead this weekend between the Chiefs and Colts, but the debut, Kyle, we always love us some food, of the Fiery Cheetah Burger. That's two patties, pepper jack, and American cheese topped with flaming Hot Cheetos. <laughs> Would you like to sit next to that guy? Nope. No. No, sir. I never understood why they why why spicy stuff. Like I don't want to eat anything at, a, at anywhere where I am going to have to be in my seat for three hours surrounded by people. Uh, a ball game, an aeroplane, uh, a bus ride. The things I need need marketed to me is like a chicken sandwich, some soup. Uh, maybe uh, maybe some fries, but like fiery, spicy, this, that, whatever, oily, bacony. Like I get it, it's good. It's I'm manly, right? But I, you don't want to do man stuff and watch sports, right? But unfortunately, those uh. around you are probably they're not going to enjoy it. Have some respect. Put some respect on it. Hey, it's time to call Sierra Pacific. For this winter's best deal on a new furnace, call Sierra Pacific now, 800-551-3040. Great transition. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Let's talk Kings. I got some cool stuff for you. Uh, I really do. I have some very cool stuff for you. Uh, first off, though, let's uh, hear from our friend Lance Woods. That's how you do it, baby. That's how you ball out. He heard y'all talking. That's how you respond. 14 and 14 with five assists. He done it all tonight. He- uh. I should say because he includes video uh, that that the he Lance is referring to is Willie Cauley Stein. I think he says it right at the beginning. Did of the he? Video. Oh, I must have missed that. Y'all talking? That's how you respond. Fourteen and fourteen with five assists. He done it all tonight. He out there validating parking right now. He did it all. Put some respect on Trill's name. That's what happened when we play our game for four quarters. These teams can't beat us. We be beating ourselves. We got too many weapons. Our bench almost all scored. They starters. We got Bagley and Giles doing work for miles. Bogey and Yogi getting buckets, homie. Justin Jackson about that action. Did you hear these balls? Where's my record deal? And how many of these chase down blocks does Fox got to get before teams realize he not having it? That's a world-class athlete and an all-first team NBA defender. Every time you think you ahead and you think you about to get money, he comes smacking away like child support. Or <laughs> oh, I missed that last night, Lance. I fell asleep before he, uh, he got it out there. I had a, I had a buddy. Love me some uh, Lance Woods. You can follow I, him uh, at Sir Lance Woods on Twitter. And he's Lance Woods everywhere else. It's Lance Woods everywhere else. Instagram and all that. that's where Snapchat, all the kids are. Everybody's, everybody's on Instagram. Instagram's great. Why? What does Instagram do that you can't do on Twitter? Uh, it's more visual. Yeah, than... You can post a picture on Twitter and write things. Yeah, but Instagram, it's the it's the scrolling of just photos. It's like an illustrated book versus a novel. But like I can't I, I can't click on the like the videos. I can't turn my phone to the side and watch them in uh, sure. landscape. I, I can't click on the pictures. I have to landscape. Pinch. Yeah, thank you. Wow, I, I think I, I'm gonna isolate. Do you hear these bars? <laughs> I just don't. I, I don't. I I really don't understand Snapchat. Like, sorry. Um, hey. Willie Cauley Stein had more than ten rebounds last night, and the Kings won. Let's talk. This is a thing now. Yeah, let, let's this talk is about a thing that. Now. Uh, let's have that conversation because Willie Cauley Stein going into last night, uh, I said it. Almost everybody said it. Like, oh, I'm good. Okay, I'd rather see him play the Warriors because now he's going up against Andre Drummond, and Drummond is just gonna. Well, we also thought him. Blake Griffin was gonna play. We did. He did. But Andre Drummond's very, very good at the basketball, and and is a uh, I believe leads the league in rebounds. If he, if, if he not, doesn't, he's, he's close. Right there. Uh, he's very, very good. Willie was better than Andre last night. I, I'm very comfortable saying that Willie Colley Stein outplayed Andre yeah, Drummond. Yeah, Drummond looked sluggish and slow last night. There was never a time. There was a like two minute stretch in the fourth quarter where he he went to the rack a couple times and and grabbed a couple of tough rebounds. Sure. But other than that, he was he was totally ineffective last night and got. Thoroughly outplayed by Willie, who had a monster first half. I don't want to. It's not always black and white. I don't want to go all the way over. We're not. We're not. 
we're not sitting here saying Willie Cauley Stein hasn't deserved any criticism and is super great at everything. But as I've often said, you've often said, if you're going to praise somebody all the time and have their back, you've got to point out, you've got to be fair and point out when they make mistakes. We did that with Coach Yeager the other day. If you're going to have an issue with somebody's play all the time, warranted, of course, when they do well, you have to praise them. And, and writer for Sacktown Royalty, Tony X Pitres, whatever his name is, starts with an X. Nailed it. I did not. Uh, he put something up that was interesting. First 21 games, Willie Cauley-Stein, 8.2 rebounds. Last 21 games, Willie Cauley-Stein, 9.5 rebounds. First 21 games, Willie Cauley-Stein, a half a block a game. Last 21 games, Willie Cauley-Stein, 0.9 blocks a game. First 21 games, Willie Cauley-Stein, 2.1 assists. Last 21, 3.1 assists. His numbers have gone significantly up, and I understand 0.9 blocks is not what you want out of your center, Mm -hmm. but he's doubled his block total in the last 21 games. Sure. He's added uh, almost one and a half rebounds, and it's not like he wasn't rebounding at all before. 8.2 is 8.2, but now he's up to almost 10 in his last 21, and he's added a full assist a game. You have to point that out. And last night, he outplayed Andre Drummond. But the the issue, I think now arises with with Cauley Stein in, in particular is we've seen this before. Sure. Like we've seen these stretches of, of five, sometimes ten games where it's like, look at this. This is a 15 and 10 guy yep. in the NBA who can protect the rim and, and pass a little bit. And then he just falls off for a month. Yeah, he disappears. That's and the that, problem. That's the that's the biggest issue. And like you said, it, it what we we point out when he doesn't play well, so we're going to point out when he does play well. But it's not on a game to game basis, right? It's can he string together if he goes fifteen and ten for the entire uh, or what was he last night? Fourteen and fourteen. Sure. If he goes fourteen and fourteen for the next forty games. Write him a check. Great. Write him a check. But but there the problem with Willie Cauley Stein and why to me he is so infuriating is is that he he is so talented he is so good I've said so it good. many times I believe he has all-star talent but he disappears and he is inconsistent which is why it's tough to trust him now I was I've been debating I've been debating all week to talk about this to bring this up I really have I'm being dead serious. Because on one hand, I don't want to put something out there that isn't accurate. And I don't want to, like I said before, I'll criticize Willie. But I I think you can go over the line. And I think people have gone over the line. It's never personal. It's never anything. It should always just be about your play. I want to say something that could be a possible explanation and or defense for him. But I also have a lot of ignorance, and I also don't want to put something out there that's not true, Kyle. Now, obviously, I've decided to bring it up because I'm talking about sure. it, but I just want to put that – I want to put the, the – the, 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 not the narrative, the, the, the uh, precursor, whatever, the, the qualifier. The caveat. The caveat, thank you. The, I don't know what I'm talking about here. I, I am ignorant about this, and I don't know if this is accurate. But I was going through some old stuff on Will. I was reading up on Willie, and I remember when he was dra- – I read something about when he was drafted that Willie uh, – and, and Kings fans will remember this. There was something that came out that Willie suffers from. I believe it's a sickle cell trait. Not the, not anemia, but the trait, sickle cell trait. And – I know, and I remember, and I was reading about it that sometimes the effects can be exhaustion, um, uh, what uh, le- uh, being lethargic, and it occurred to me like, oh my God, he's so talented. Why does he disappear? Why does it seem like he he doesn't have effort sometimes, and then sometimes he does. Sometimes he's diving for the ball. Sometimes he's not. And it occurred to me, oh my God, like could this? Now I understand Kings fans being like, well, that doesn't matter. You pay the guy for what he does, and it's not an. Ex- yeah, I get it. But I, I found myself wondering, again, as ignorant non-doctor guy, are there just are there games where Willie is fighting stuff 
And he never says anything and he never excuses it and he works his way through it. And if that's the case, I feel kind of bad. Like, I feel like that's something on one hand you don't want out there. You don't want it to be an excuse. I guarantee you, Willie probably slapped me if he was here saying, dude, I, that's not an excuse for me. I would never use that. He's not. I'm asking. I'm asking because that would fill in a lot of holes if that's the case. That would fill in a lot of explanations. But again, I feel like I think I read something when he got drafted four years ago. I'm not sure that that's great ground to to stand on with that. It was a thing that was there when he was drafted. It was a conversation. I remember there was a moment where everybody freaked out. Oh, my God. And then people got semi-educated, the difference between trait and anemia and all that. And everybody, you know, a lot of people suffer from different different things, different maladies, different things that they have to deal with all the time. But it's like, you know, it would make, I would like to ask somebody medical and see if, listen, that doesn't excuse, that's not a, a, a broad brush excuse. But it would it, it would explain a couple of things, and and I've never once said that I don't have respect for the guy, or that I don't like the guy, or that I'm not rooting for the guy. All those are the I, I all three. You're grasping for reasons as to why sometimes kind of yeah he'll go from fourteen fourteen and kind five of, yeah to uh, seven and four yeah yeah and if it was every once in a while he just had a bad game it'd be one thing but I don't know it's just, it's just a weird it's such a it's just such a peaks and valley with him he goes from from all-star caliber production to uh maybe this guy shouldn't be on the floor for more than 10 minutes well I'm going back to I'm I'm, I'm going to uh Kentucky.com right now um <laughs> no <laughs> I know well it's they covered the sports there sure um but I'm reading an article um, dated, uh, and this is where I started looking at November uh, 12th. I'm sorry, December 11, 2013. Well, uh, uh, while electric blonde hair helped Willie Colley Stein stand out Tuesday night, he said a less obvious characteristic affected his performance. Sickle cell trait, a blood disorder which can infect endurance, was a factor in playing 25 minutes in Kentucky's victory over Boise State. Um, when asked about how he might have posted triple double if he played more minutes, Colley Stein said, I was having a sickle cell problem. Uh, my chest starts to hurt. Apparently, it's a recurring issue. Now, again, I'm just going off of his quotes and what he said back then, but there's also the danger of I, I don't want to throw anything out there. Sure. He might right. sit here and say, dude, that's I don't have any of these issues. Shut up. And I, I want to like continually repeat that. Sure. But it's something that he said, it's something that was out there. Okay. So if that's a thing, if fatigue is, is legitimately a thing, that gets that's a perfect segue into something I wanted to talk about today. Sure. Do you put Marvin Bagley in the starting lineup at this point? <clears throat> Would Willie benefit from getting to come off the bench and playing in, in shorter spurts? I don't know what the mental characteristics are in, inside the locker room, and only the players and Coach Yeager sure. and his staff could, could deal with that, but here's what my gut instinct is. I'm talking about... Go ahead. If, if go you want to make ahead. that move, then you're probably losing Willie for the year. You might as well just adjust. You're, you think, you're, okay, so you think he's in a contract you, year? He's a longtime starter. If you pull him and you put him on the bench in the second half of the season in a contract year, that has major ramifications that fans don't care about. And I get it. Fans look screw sure. it. So what? Suck it right, up, right, buttercup. Right, right. But it has effects. No, in I, the I, I'm room. I'm with you there. So. I want to shift gears then to should Marvin Bagley be starting at, at all? Or do you think he can't coexist with Willie and Bealitz has to start because of the way he spreads the floor? Me personally, but this goes into a deeper philosophy. Yeah, co- co- let's let's pretend Coach Yeager calls you right now and says, hey, who am I starting against the Hornets? I say that I really want, I really want to make the playoffs this year, like every fan does. I'm so uh-huh. tired of it. I don't think we're going to. Okay. And even if we do, listen, chip in a chair, I get it, but you're 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 one round and probably done. I want Kings fans to remember that I do think the Kings will make the playoffs, unlike Mr. No Faith. What over here? What is Captain more, no What Faith. is more important to me is the development of our youth for the future. Uh huh. I don't know that Marvin Bagley and Harry Giles are the future of this team uh, at, in the front court. In the front court, playing together. Interesting. Okay. No, I, I, I just, I don't know if Harry Giles and or Marvin Bagley can defend NBA centers long term. I don't know if they're going to grow into their bodies even more. I don't know what that is long term, but I know I want to find out. Theoretically, they are. Theoretically, they absolutely are. I don't, I don't believe Willie is going to be on this team in the future. Right. So, 
X's and O's, logic and logic. I'm I I'm it's not my job to make sure Willie gets a good contract this summer. What my job is to ensure doing everything I can to uh have this team win a, win an NBA championship. So I think I would put Willie on the bench and I would let Marvin and Harry start knowing that we're probably in the interim a worse team. Yeah, I think I I think I we're think a that's worse team too. for that. Willie right now to me is better Certainly than Def- Giles, definitely than Bagley. I'm sorry, uh, certainly with Giles, possibly with Bagley. Definitely, he's more experienced, and it, it shows. It just shows in in his decision-making. So, I think for future sake, yeah. I, I, I Last night, Coach Yeager played Giles and Bagley together for more than a few minutes. Man, I was excited. Yeah, and... Bagley just has an impact when he's in the game. He is so much more active on the glass than anybody else on the team. His motor just goes, and and that was the big thing coming out of the draft. Like, he's super athletic with a motor that doesn't stop. Yeah. And that's very apparent. And I just feel like he, he would be so much more effective playing with the starting group than, than and I know he plays alongside some some starters, but... You give him starter minutes, 30, 35 minutes, and he gets to play primarily with, with Fox and Heald. But but just understand that what you're likely dealing with is right now, Willie starts and Marvin, and, and if Marvin's going to come in, he's probably going to come in for Bielitsa. Right, and so, that, that affects your spacing a little bit. I get that. And, and right now, you can start Willie and bring Bagley and Giles off the bench, and you're going to get 100% effort out of them. Well... Again, we just got done talking about Willie, but you're going to get max effort as you you can out of those three guys if you flip the script and you put Giles and Bagley in the starting lineup. I just don't know what happens with Willie. I just don't know what happens with Willie. I'm not saying... No, I, I... It's a very I, serious accusation to say the guy would go into the tank, and I don't want to say that because now you're questioning heart, and I'm not going to do I, that. I fully, I fully understand but what I you're saying. But I worry about it. There is, and that's why that's why we talk about coaches don't just pull guys mid game, right, right? Because there is there is a mental chess match that goes on uh, with with NBA head coaches. Hey, it's time to call Sierra Pacific for this winter's best deal on a new furnace. Call Sierra Pacific now eight hundred five five one three zero four zero. Speaking of Instagram earlier in the show yeah. and Marvin Bagley, this is a great segue. I again, reading is awesome. I found something last night. And this is from Marvin. <laughs> reading ba- is awesome. It's great. I found something from Marvin Bagley's dad, of all people, who I Marvin follow Dadley. on Instagram. Marvin Dadley, thank you. Um, it was an article from February 19, 2013, uh, titled One on One, featuring Marvin Bagley III, and then in parentheses, Arizona. Last summer, I traveled down to the sixth grade AAU Nationals in search of the next big prospect. I heard about this kid from 916 Select out of California and felt I needed to check him out. Once I saw Marvin Bagley the third play, I knew my journey was complete. The developing small forward passed the look test standing 6-5 and the skill test when I watched him perform. After the tournament, he appeared at the top of several ranking lists for the class of 2018. Marvin currently plays for We All Can Go All-Stars and Team Bibby. We contacted Marvin to see what was going on, and this is what he said. Marvin Bagley played for a Sacramento AAU team in sixth grade. Wow. Mike Bibby's team. Now, apparently, when I put this out there on Twitter last night, apparently this was in some aspect told to me by Mike Bibby himself to my face when we were interviewing him at the uh, the, the, the the big cage to uh <laughs> sports fest. <laughs> Now I have an explanation. Good listening. For, I, I have an explanation. I there you were, were trying not to pass out. I was out? literally trying not to lose consciousness up on the stage. That is the hottest I've ever been, and I'm not talking looks. And I was leaning against a rail, dizzy, worried about passing out in front of Mike Baby and Vlade Divac and Bonzi Wells. But how cool is that when you talk about connections and and karma and and this and that, whatever? Marvin Bagley played for Mike Baby's team out of 916 right here when he was in sixth grade that's cool that's cool basically and now with marvin bagley's kid brother going to sheldon and tearing it up uh there playing basketball i feel like marvin bagley's kind of a a hometown kid 
Not not totally, but there's some ties there. What are the odds of that? He's, no, this is cool because the way Stephen Curry has adopted Oakland and, and vice versa, that's something that would be fantastic to sure, have. Sure. Here, you get a guy who's not necessarily from Sacramento, but if he can become somebody who's ingrained in the community so much so that uh, you forget that he's not. From yeah. Sacramento, yeah, that's that's, that's a very that's cool. a that's a really really cool thing. We'll take a break when we come back. Final half hour of the week, and we'll kick it off with cold hard facts brought to you by Coors Light with Kyler Madsen. We're back in a couple sports eleven forty K H D. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on sports eleven forty. Hey, the Kings. Held on to a big lead last night. They led by as many as 22 against the Pistons and walked away with a 112-102 win behind 14 points, 14 rebounds, and 5 assists from Willie Cauley-Stein. A huge game for him. Seven different Kings scored in double figures. Sacramento's off tonight. They welcome in the Charlotte Hornets to the Golden 1 Center tomorrow. Russell Westbrook had a monster game last night for the Thunder, but they couldn't pull out a win. Excuse me, Russell Westbrook went for 24 points, 13 rebounds, and 24 assists, but the Spurs beat the Thunder 154-147 in double overtime behind LaMarcus Aldridge's career-high 56 points. Westbrook became just the third player in NBA history with multiple 20-point, 10 rebounds, and 20-assist games. He joined Oscar Robertson and Magic Johnson. It's 8:31. Time to get ready for the International Sportsman's Expo. January 17th through the 20th at Cal Expo. Get your tickets at sportsexpos.com. Those are your top stories. Go back to The Drive. The best morning show on KHTK. The Drive continues now. That's right, I say. Welcome in. Final segment. Coming up next, <laughs> final half hour of the drive. We're so happy you've joined us. To my dad who was texting me, Dad, the uh, video stream is up. So I don't know what you're doing. Log out and log back in. Dad texted me. <clears throat> Let's see here. Live stream not on KHTK. It says it's coming in five hours. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we started in five hours. Right? Ow. It's up. It's up, Dad. I'm looking at it. Brought to you by... Shout out to Carmichael Dad. Uh, shout out to Carmichael Dad. Okay, it's, uh, brought to you by Jiffy Lube and our good friends at the Sacramento Republic. Uh, also, want to shout out our good friends at Firewings for sponsoring our hotline, which Sean Salisbury featured on and a few of you callers at 339-1140. 1-800-9-20-1140. We have some cold, hard facts brought to you by Coors Light starring Kyle Madsen. Let's do that right now. It's time, it's time for the Coors Light cold, hard fact of the day. Here's Kyle Madsen. So a good cold, hard fact would have been the thing about Russell Westbrook becoming the third player in NBA history with multiple 20, 10, 20 games. But I've okay. been saying that in my update all day. So I'll tie mm. it back. I'll tie today's cold, hard fact back to um, Willie Cauley-Stein, who we talked about in the last segment. Sure. The Kings are now uh, 15 and 6 when he goes for 10 plus rebounds in a game. And they are 6 and 15 when he does not. So when he rebounds 10 plus, the Kings are better. The, what, like significant. And normally, like, I would pass that off as just like, oh, hey, this is kind of a weird statistical thing. Like, for the longest time, the Titans were, like, undefeated when Derrick Henry got 11 or more carries. Mm-hmm. But the circumstances were so, like, strange. And it was a fairly small sample size. This is, like, this is like 40, 42 games. <sighs> Again, I'm fascinated by Willie Cauley-Stein. He's the most fascinating player on the roster to me. He really is. Not the best, not the worst, not the one I love the most, not the one I don't like the most. He's just so damn fascinating. The other night at the uh, the, the towards the end of the Suns game, what, what do you have, three blocks in a row? Yeah. The guy was a defensive stopper at Kentucky. That's what he was known for. You see nights where he can score beautifully. 
where he can he can spin through two guys, beautiful layup, little double clutch, just agility for a big man you don't see that often. There are times where his his 10, 12 foot jumper looks fantastic. There are times when he shoots a free throw uh, and it looks like it will break something. And there are times when he shoots a free throw and it looks beautiful, form and all. I said 15 and 6 or 12 and 6. Wow, okay, well, that's different. I know, I lied to everybody. All right. I'm sorry. Apparently, it's the Coors Light cold hard maybes. <laughs> yeah, 12 and 6 and then 9 and 15 when he does not get 10 boards. Can I give you a couple things? What? Fine. Hey, man, we got five more minutes in the second. Yeah, no, I know. Are you out of cold hard facts? <laughs> Man, I've got cold, hard, good jokes. The Spurs beat the Thunder 154-147 to 147 in double overtime last night. Boy, the, did they. The 301 combined points are tied for the second most in a game over the last 20 seasons and are the most since 2006. We talked about LaMarcus Aldridge. Maybe more surprising. In fact, I think it is more surprising than Russell Westbrook's line was the fact that he had a career-high 56 points last night. It was the second most points by any player without attempting a three-pointer since this person scored 61 March 6th, 2000. Wow. It was the most points by any player without attempting a three-pointer since this person scored 61 on March 6th, 2000. Who was that player? Allen Iverson. Good guess. But you gonna score that maybe without attempting a three? He's a guard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, slashing guy. Was, uh, was it Shaq? Shaquille O'Neal on his 28th birthday scored 61 points March 6, 2000 without attempting a three-pointer. Hey, what does a baby computer call his father? <sighs> Data. The Spurs made their first 14 three-point attempts in Thursday's double overtime win over the Thunder. According to Elias Sports, that's the most consecutive made threes to start a game by any team over the last 20 seasons. You know, after like the seventh one, the Thunder were like, hey, let them shoot. They're going to miss eventually. (laughs) Right? They won't stay hot. Uh, apparently, they did. You know what made me upset last night at what? the end of the first quarter? Bogdan had plenty of room for like a three-quarter court heave, and he chose not to. <laughs> that makes me upset. I think the NBA needs to adjust the rule that if you take a shot from beyond like X feet, call it 50 feet, yeah. with with less than two seconds left like it doesn't count unless you make it because i'm all in on the on the on the three-quarter court heave i am too and and guys the don't, you don't want to mess with but right it's like and guys, bogdan's been shooting really poorly lately and i'm guessing that's why he put it in his back heave pocket. really gonna over the course of a season it, it it matters to guys it's dumb going two of ten like okay but that two of eleven ooh. You know, the Spurs also shot 16 of 19. That's what they ended up, 16 of 19 from three. That 84.2% shooting from three is the best in NBA history by a team to attempt at least 15 threes. That is, that's wild, dude. That's 16 of 19. That's the kind of shooting, that's the kind of rate that when they start getting up to like 10, 12, 14 threes, you're going, hey, they're not going to shoot like this the whole game. And then they go 16 of 19. Make an adjustment, Thunder. What are we doing? We have, what, two minutes left here? Yeah. Can we play a mini game of Make Kyle Laugh? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Ready? Let me get in my sad place. <laughs> I had something to give you, to say to make you sad, but I don't want to. What creature is smarter than a talking parrot? What? A spelling bee. Okay. How does the ocean say hello? It waves. Bad Joke Friday, everybody. Bad Joke Friday. Feel free to text in at 44
By the way, some of the jokes you're texting in, guys, I can't say, and you know it. What did one plate whisper to the other plate? Dinner's on me. Come on, it's like he's not even trying. Why was the picture sent to jail? Why? It was framed. Um, what has four wheels and flies? A garbage truck. That was good. That's a good one. What do you call a rich elf? Wealthy. <laughs> Wealthy. <laughs> My life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for wealthy. All right. Uh, everybody should have tuned out by now. It's just us. What do you call it? Boomerang that won't come back. The stick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does anyone need an does anyone need an arc? I know a guy. Oh the- <laughs> <laughs> This is a this is a Mitch Hedberg. This is a Mitch Hedberg joke. Okay. Uh is a hippopotamus a hippopotamus? Or just a really cool apotamus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, nope, can't read that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's just scrolling the text line right now, just skipping you, a bunch. Do you want to? Yeah, I am. Do you want to? You want to continue with the hippo theme? Yeah, di- uh, then we gotta go. What's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference between a hippo and a zippo? One's, one's a little he- lighter. One's heavy and one's a little yeah. lighter. Okay, real quick, can I tell you a cat joke? Yeah, quickly. Uh, just kidding. It's that time again. What's on tap? Brought to you by... <clears throat> Clearing the throat. Ever go around all day long with just that frog... And you don't, you don't like this. Well, once upon a time, somebody figured out how to clear a throat. And you could go from talking like uh, Scott Farrell. That's Farrell on the bench. To talking like, uh, you know, I don't know, somebody with a clear voice. I wasn't going to use me. Talking like Kyle Matson. Yeah. Clearing the throat. Try it today. Uh, what's on tap tonight? What is whatever? Some, some basketball. Not involving the Kings. So I don't really care, but I'll, I'll, you know, whatever. Whatever. Atlanta, Philly. Can't wait. Bucks, Wizards. I'm there. Pacers, Knicks. That's going to be on the center t- TV. Nets, Raptors. Probably a close one. Give me Nets, Raptors. If Jurassic Park has taught me anything, the Raptors win that fight every time. <laughs> Cavs at Rockets. Mavs at Timberwolves so far is our our best game. Lakers at Jazz. The uh, Charlotte Hornets, the day before they come in to take on the Sacramento Kings, will be playing up in Portland against the Trailblazers tonight. And the Chicago Bulls face the Warriors at Oracle. Golden State favored by 15 and a half. I mean, dude, these are just, this is just a crap show tonight in the NBA. It sucks. The Kings getting another team tomorrow, by the way, on the back end of a road back to back. They've got a bunch of those coming up, including a couple on the road. Schedule very, very favorable. And again, the Kings have yet to lose in the second half of the NBA season. Uh, Breaking news out of the NFL. It's on my screen right in front of me. This is huge, Kyle. According to multiple media outlets, Antonio Brown has unfollowed the Steelers on Twitter. No way. Antonio Brown has unfollowed the Steelers on Twitter. That's all I need to know. He's gone. Do you think the Steelers will collectively be like, bro, come on, man? No, but I think they will be like, Antonio, maybe it's time to call Sierra Pacific for this winter's best deal on a new furnace. Call Sierra Pacific now, 800-551-3040. My dad is is just going for it today. Uh, we have a new 
we have a new, uh, for the KHDK.com broadcast, uh, we have a new weight screen that Eunice put together. When we go to break, uh, it shows a cup of coffee from the top view, looking down on a cup of coffee, and uh, it has a little timer in the bottom right that uh, tells you when we're going to come back. Uh, again, the, the TV broadcast, if you haven't checked it out, brought to you by The Republic, and uh, Jiffy Lube is phenomenal. Uh, and my dad... <laughs> Is that standby symbol when you go to break? Is are you, is it looking down a gun muzzle? I haven't seen that one before. No, Dad, it, it's a cup of coffee. He also thinks that when you shouted him out, you're being snarky. No, I said, Dad, Kyle loves you and Mom. Yeah, I There's like no them snark. way more than I like you. That's very, very true. They're nice to me. Stop using the damn Mr. Magoo voice. I love you, Daddy. Come on. It's all in fun. Um, the fact that you've been doing this for this long and your folks still listen is legitimately super cool. It really, it really is. It's, <laughs> it really, really is. Guys, I can't say any of these jokes. Okay? The secret code word, by the way, for the big game party... Uh, is super, it looks like, is in Super Bowl. It's not Xena. It's not Greg. It's not Cena. It's not Zebra. It's not Sniper. Yes, that's a foot. Well, I guess it kind of is. No, that's no. more of a hockey thing than a. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Wright has a joke where he says. I want to get a tattoo over my whole body of me, but taller. Uh, I'm sorry. This is just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. A lady in Paris asked a cop, where's the restroom? And the cop said, wee oui, wee. Oui. And she said, no, poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> That's dumb. Uh, ha. All right, so we got big football coming up this weekend. Uh, Kyle. My face has big football coming up. Uh, yeah, that's a good point right there. My face has big football coming up this weekend. Uh, Colts and Chiefs. Uh, Chief, uh, now, we, we predicted the the games. Yes. Uh, uh, let's go with the line now. Okay. Colts, Chiefs, Chiefs favored by five and a half. Um, I like the Chiefs because I, I, I like the Chiefs to win, and I, I think if they win, it's going to be by a touchdown or more. I like the Colts. I like I, I picked the Colts to win this one. Sure. They probably won't, but I, I like it being a close Getting game. Getting five and a half is all right. Cowboys, uh, Rams. Rams favored by a full touchdown, seven oh, points. Phew. Give me the Cowboys plus seven. I agree. The Patriots are favored by four. I like the Chargers. I guess the Chargers. I agree. I like the Chargers straight up, too. New Orleans. Really? You like the Chargers? I mean, we're going back to that. Wow. Yeah. The Saints are favored by eight points over the Eagles. We talked about this in Fort Ontario. I like the I like the Saints to win. I like the Eagles plus eight. I'm saying again. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go. I'm not gonna at the try rate to... at the rate my picks are going. Pick opposite of all <laughs> of those, and you're set. I, uh, I I I say don't don't overthink it. I'm I'm going with all the road teams. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I'll go with three and then this one. No, just go with all four road teams. I think he'll win three or four. I don't think yeah, three or four are gonna it. win outright. Yeah, but with the with the with, with the, the spread. spread. Yeah. Uh, from the nine one six, can you watch the video feed from your mobile phone? I can't ever get it to work. Yeah, just go yeah, to K, go to go to uh, khdk.com on your mobile. Unless you're on like a flip phone. Yeah, then it wouldn't work. If you're on like one of those jitterbugs, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> go to khdk.com on your mobile, uh, and then you just have to scroll down uh, to like you know uh, uh, like. A quarter page down, you'll see a, a, a watch live feature, you know, a big video box. Just click on that. I've always got it up on my tablet right in front of me. So I can I can look and go, oh, Kyle looked interesting a few seconds ago. I don't know why I can't get the stream on my sidekick. Hey, what's the difference between a well-dressed man on a unicycle and a poorly dressed man on a bike? What? A tire. Yeah. Why don't they play poker in the jungle? Why? Too many cheetahs. How did Darth Vader know what Luke got for Christmas? Oh. He felt his presence. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. 
right. Hey, I love Dumb Joke Friday. Yeah. I also think the Kings are going to kind of kick the crap out of the Hornets. Oh, God. Kyle. I liked them. I liked them minus eight last night. I like the Kings and whatever the line is going to be, as long as the line's not something outrageous. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. Damn it. Mm. That's a funny joke. That way. really actually is. Um, why couldn't Dracula's wife fall asleep? Why? Because of his coffin. There's a call. Can we take this caller to end the show? There's no call. (laughs) (laughs) You are just... I just... Maybe my favorite segment of the week is the final segment on Friday because we just... Like, we have run out, guys. Hey, what do you call a can opener that doesn't work? What? A can't opener. What do you call a magic dog? A labracadabrador. <laughs> Want to hear a joke about a piece of paper? No. Ah, never mind. It's terrible. Mm. Oh, okay. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? What is orange and sounds like a parrot? What's that? A carrot. Hey, we have a caller. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Why do you keep hanging up? They're not there ever, Kyle. Stop lying about calls. It's like bird box, but I just see, I see callers. Uh, all right. Should I? Uh, can you hit the outro music so we can get out of here, please? All right, I'm going to hit Good. the outro music. It's gracious. So. All right. Now that we've successfully gotten everyone to tune out. Why did the turtle cross the road, Kyle? Why? To get to the Shell station. Eunice does a great job. With all our uh, video and everything else, and the poor person has to sit through our entire broadcast. Uh, Kyle is okay. Thanks to Sean Salisbury and all of you. We'll be back on Monday at 6 a.m. Tune in. Jim Rum is next. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast day and your weekend on Sports 1140 KHK. Go Kings. Bye-bye now.